All right, let's start with number one. And number one is combining like terms, simplifying. So can someone tell me what are the three different term types here? I have the K term right here, right here. So I have two K terms. Then I have the M terms right here. And right here. And final, uh, finally, I have my constants, or just simple numbers, right here and right here. So now you just combine what's similar to get an answer. 12k minus 11k, well, that's just a k. 1k or just a k, doesn't matter. Uh, the m's, we have 6m plus 3m, and that gives us a 9m, so it's a positive 9m plus 9m. And then the constants, we have a negative 8. Don't forget the sign it belongs to the term it's in front of. So we have the negative 8 plus 5. And that gives us a negative 3, or in this case, minus 3. That's the answer. Questions on 1? All right, let's move on to number 2 then. All right, with number two, it's similar to number one. You're still asked to simplify and combine like terms. But before you do that, there's a step that you need to take. Can someone tell me what is that first step you need to take? You need to open up this parenthesis by distributing whatever's outside, the three, via multiplication to everything inside. So you need to distribute this three there and there and when you do that you end up with 3 times 3y which is 9y 3 times 2g which is 6g and then you rewrite the rest of the problem because we're not doing anything to the rest of the problem yet Now, can someone tell me what are the different terms found in this second step? We have, of course, the y terms, the 9y and the 12y. Then we have the g terms. And last but not least, we have our constants, or the numbers, without any variables. And now you simply combine your like terms. 9y plus 12y, that gets us 21y. Then you work on your g terms, 6g minus 8g. Don't forget this negative right here belongs to the, this g term here. So it's 6g minus 8g, which is negative 2g. And last but not least, negative 3 plus 4. This minus belongs to this 3 here. So don't forget about it. And negative 3 plus 4 is just 1 plus 1. And that just happens to be your answer. Questions on two? All right, then let's go ahead and do number three. All right, number three is similar to one and two because you do need to combine something and then you solve it just like you would any other uh, two-step equation. So can someone tell me what should be the first step? If you said combine your x terms, I would be 
in agreement with you. So these three right here are all X terms, the same type. So you can combine them together. And that's what you should do. 6X plus 4X is 10X. 10X minus 2X is 8X. And then I'm going to rewrite the problem as it was. Next step, I'm going to subtract 10. Not add. I saw a few of you adding 10s. Nope. Subtract 10 from both sides. This is an older concept. And when you do that, you end up with, on the left side, with an 8x. On the right side, with a 24. I'm actually going to move that and write this over here to give myself some more room. All right. Now, was our last step, someone tell me? Divide both sides by 8. We're multiplying by 8 here. The opposite is to divide. And of course, we do it to both sides. And of course, the final answer is x is 24 divided by 8, 3. And you can check your solution by plugging this 3 in here for the x's. And it should work out. I'm not going to do that, but you could always check that on the quiz just to make sure you have the right answer. All right, questions on three. All right. Next, we're going to look at four. So number four on the upper left corner here. Can someone tell me what should be our first step here? If you said get rid of the denominators, you're absolutely correct. We don't like denominators, so we don't like to deal with them. And if we can get rid of them easily, we do that. Now, can someone tell me how would we get rid of the denominator of 5? If you said multiply by 5, you're absolutely correct. Now, why are we multiplying by 5? Because the denominator, or this... Uh, fraction sign is division. So in every single case here, we're dividing by 5. And the opposite of dividing by 5 is to multiply by 5. So in every single case, we're going to multiply by 5. So we're multiplying everything by 5. And we can do that. We can multiply both sides of the equation by anything that we want. As long as it's done to both sides, and I am. I'm multiplying the right side by 5, and I'm multiplying the left side by 5. Um, that's fair game. Now what this does, what this does, it allows us to get rid of the denominators. Because now I have multiplied by 5 and divided by 5. Gone. Multiplied by 5, divided by 5, gone. And gone. Now the shortcut here, and again I don't like shortcuts, but the shortcut here, if the denominator is the same, for every single member of the equation, you can pretend like it's not there. Kind of like what we did here. By multiplying by 5, we removed it and didn't really change the problem, right? The numerator stayed. So the shortcut is, if you have denominators that are the same, just get rid of the denominator. Just pretend they're not there. The shortcut only works if they're all the same, though. And this is the long way of doing it. At any rate, once that is all done, you're left with 6x minus 2x equals to 24. Of course, I can combine these. 6x minus 2x is 4x equals to 24. And for the last step, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. Hopefully, you guys know. Divide both sides by 4. It's a weird color. And of course, x equals to 6. And that's my answer. Questions on 4? All right, let's take a look at 5, which is in the upper right corner here. Can someone tell me what's the first step for number 5? If you said get rid of one of the x terms, you're absolutely correct. 
we have x terms on both sides of the equation. We don't like that. We only want it to be on one side only. So I like to choose the one that's smaller. You can get rid of either one, but I think choosing the one that's smaller is always the best way to go. So I'm going to get rid of this 5x by subtracting 5x from both sides. So I'm getting rid of this one. And over here, 8x minus 5x is 3x minus 5 equals to 17. And this is all gone. Now the rest, I assume by this point in time, you know how to do. So I shouldn't spend a lot of time on this. So I'm going to go by fairly quick. Add 5 to both sides. So 3x equals to 22. And last but not least, divide both sides by 3. So I initially didn't intend for this to end up as a fraction, but that's okay. Fractions are part of math, so you have a fractional answer. x equals to 22 over 3. And of course, you can make that into a proper fraction, which would be 7 and a third. That's okay. Fractions are not our enemy, and they're fine by math, so they're fine by me. Questions on 5. Number six on the lower left corner here. Can someone tell me what's the first step? Hopefully you guys said take this three and distribute it to everything inside this parenthesis via multiplication. Exactly those words. And when you do that, you get 16 minus x equals to 3x. Uh, plus 12 because 3 times x is 3x 3 times 4 is 12 now what's the next step if you said get rid of one of these x's you're correct and I of course will go for the smallest one and that is this lonely minus x here and how do I get rid of a minus x plus x to both sides of course not subtract x minus x subtract x that's negative 2x that really doesn't really help me much okay that means 16 that's gone 3x plus x is 4x plus 12 next step by this point should be fairly self-explanatory subtract 12 from both sides So 4x equals to 4. And then the last step is pretty simple. Divide both sides by 4. And our x is just a 1. Simple as that. Questions on number 6? All right, let's tackle 7. Right here. Number seven, you're supposed to translate this and then graph this. Simple enough. There are less than four fish in the bowl. Okay. I'm going to choose a letter. I'm going to go with F for fish or B for bowl. It doesn't really matter. What's my starting point? Four. Less than four. And which way should the alligator symbol or the inequality symbol face? Less than is one of these symbols. With less than, the back of the alligator has to face the variable. All right, let's graph this. Open circle, closed circle. Open circle because it's not equals to. And should it go left or right? Left. So it's going to be an open circle heading left.
So there are less than four fish in the bowl. Open circle, left. Questions on seven? All right, we're going to look at number eight on the far left corner. Um, and can someone tell me what's the first step here? Subtract five from both sides. Yep. Not add five, because that's going to be five plus five, which is ten. We don't want a ten. We want that five gone. Next. We have negative 3w, less than or equal to 15. My next step, please. Divide both sides by negative 3. These two are gone. So w here. 15 divided by negative 3 is negative 5. What about my alligator symbol? Do I flip it? Do I keep it? Flip it. I divide it by a negative. If you divide or multiply by a negative, flip the alligator symbol. And now it's time to graph it. Open circle or closed circle? Close circle because it's also equal to negative 5. And which direction am I going to be heading? I'm going to be heading right. So heading in the right direction. It's a closed circle. It's starting at negative 5. Questions on 8? All right, well, let's go ahead and look at number nine then. It's a find and fix my mistake problem. So can someone find my mistake and fix it for me, please? The mistake is right here. I'm dividing by three and I'm flipping my sign. Why am I flipping my sign? I shouldn't be. I'm not dividing by a negative 3. I'm dividing into a negative number, yes, but I'm not dividing by a negative number. So as long as you don't d divide or multiply by a negative number, you should not be flipping your symbol. So right here is my mistake, which of course is the same here. And that means, well, actually I had two mistakes there. My second mistake is this should have been shaded in and it should have been heading in this direction. I guess I almost missed my second mistake. I'm that good at making mistakes. Questions on nine? All right, for number 10, you're asked to identify the base and identify the exponent and then simplify. So can someone tell me what the base is? Five, not negative five. The exponent does not see this negative sign because it's not in a parenthesis. What's the exponent? That should be easy. Three. So how do we simplify this? What, what is this going to look like when we simplify? Well, the exponent tells us to multiply the base against itself three times. Sure, but this negative has to be at the front of the problem at least once, or exactly once. And I'll take this as an answer, but negative 125 is the actual full answer. 5 times 5 is 25. Um, 5 times 25 is 125, and the negative just sticks on. All right, questions on 10? Take a look at 11. Pretty close to getting finished here. All right. 
Number 11, can someone tell me what's negative 4 to the second power equal to? Positive 16. Negative 4 times negative 4, positive 16. Um, I'm going to rewrite this plus 2 in the parentheses. What's first, a 4 to the first power? Just 4. What about 157 to 0 power? 1. And how do I deal with that negative exponent right there? Pesky negative exponent. If you said flip it, you're absolutely correct. 3 over 1, or just 3, but I'm going to keep that over 1 there. Of course, our exponent now just turns positive, and we can ignore it. Then it becomes easy. Uh, 16 plus 2 times 4 plus 1 is 5, minus just a 3. 16 plus 10 minus 3, which is um, 16 plus 10, that's 26. 26 minus 3, that's 23, unless my math is wrong. It is that time of the day. That looks good, though. Yep. Questions on 11? Okay, for number 12 on the top left corner, can someone tell me what should be the first step on that very first problem? If you said add the exponents, you're absolutely correct. We add the exponents because we're multiplying two exponential bases, so exponential forms that have the same base, and you add the exponents in that case. 2 plus 8, which of course gives me just 5 to the 10th power. What about down here? What do we do here? If you said subtract the exponents, totally agree with you. Like, totally. 4 minus 3, which is 1. So it's m to the first power or just m. I'm just going to write m. You can write m to the first if you want. And down here, what do we do? Multiplication. You multiply the outside exponent with the inside exponent. So that's 5 times 7, which is, of course, 35. So I just gave you the three scenarios of dealing with exponents. And you got to remember the differences between here, multiplication, adding, subtraction. These are easy to get confused especially the addition and the multiplication, so just be careful, don't rush it, and think about the problem before you solve it. Number 13, um, it's a step-by-step -step problem, and it's solved in three steps. The first step is right there. You multiply those upper exponents, and I'm going to rewrite the entire problem. 3 times 4 is 12, so n to the 12 times n to the 5th times n to the negative 2nd, all over n to the 8th times n. Now, what do you do with the top exponents and the bottom exponents separately? So what do you do with the top ones, what do you do with the bottom ones? You add them. On the top you have 12 plus 5 plus a negative 2. On the bottom, you have 8 plus 1. Don't forget that 1. Which means we get n to 
12 plus 5, that's 17. 17 minus 2, that's 15. And to the 15th power over, I oh guess that's a 15. On the bottom here, n to the 9th power. And now what do you do with the exponents here? You subtract them. So 15 minus 9, which of course yields n to the 6th power. I think all my math is right. Questions? Number 14 on the bottom left here. Can someone tell me how would we break this down? What are the different parts we can break this down to? The three parts are the constants or the numbers or the coefficients, the 4 and the 6. So I can write 4 times 6. Then the y's. So I can write y to the third times just y. And last but not least, of course, the h's. So I'm going to write h to the fifth times h to the second. And this should be a lot simpler now. 4 times 6, that's 24. What about the y's? What do I get from the y's? To the 4th, 3 plus 1. And the h's? To the 7, 5 plus 2. So add the exponents here, add the exponents there. And my final answer, so I'm going to combine this all. 24, y to the 4th, h to the 7th, done. Questions on 14? Last problem at last. On the bottom right, we have 15. Can someone tell me what's the first step here? Take the outside exponent and distribute it via multiplication to all the inside exponents. Here, here, there. And it looks roughly like this. 5, which doesn't seem like it has an exponent, so it's got an exponent of 1, of course. So 1 times 4, then m, and m already has an exponent that makes it easy. 5 times 4, so it's multiplication. n, 6 times 4. All right. That gives us 5 to the 4th power, m to the 20th power, n to the 24th power. And that's the answer. Questions? It's pretty simple. All right. Thank you very much. This video is on my site. And good luck on the trimester test.